Nora MAO2 Andrea. Its basic operations are the same as the Sophia series, but it's been equipped with a range of additional modules. A mid-air jump using water pressure, splash booster, and a sub-weapon that can wrap around enemies and create platforms, water bind. It can even move enemies that have been trapped with spark tackle. All the spark tackle is back! While Andrea is submerged in clean water, it will recover SP as well. I wonder if the planet Elfie landed on was filled with water. Well, perhaps. Maybe it was Montage, I don't know. Welcome to the finale of Blaster Master Zero Two. Last time, Eve got a tank from this mysterious ghost girl who bears a striking resemblance to Eve herself. It's as if they were related in some sort of past lifetime or something. Oh, wait a minute. Elfie is Eve's daughter in a different dimension, but this version of Elfie, the ghost girl we just met earlier, is not Eve's daughter. Strange, I know. <laughs> this version of Elfie, just like this version of Eve, is a support droid, so she's not a human and she was basically made on the same assembly line as Eve. And the reason why Elfie and Eve look the same, or at least in a support droid sense, not that they were related in a past lifetime, um, their genetic modeling for support droids, that is, is based off of Jennifer Gardner. You may not remember Jennifer Gardner, or in this case her name was actually Jennifer Cornette in the NES Blaster Master Japanese game which was called Metafight. Super Planetary War Chronicles Metafight, or however you pronounce that term in Japanese. Um, she was not really an important character in the sense that she only got one screen. And that was at the very end of the credits. <laughs> Jennifer was more fleshed out in the Japanese instruction manual of the original game, but it's in Japanese. <laughs> so, have fun understanding that. Damn it! I'm straying too far from my original subject. Um, Eve and Elfie were made to look like Jennifer Gardner because Jennifer Gardner was the original um, template for looks, I guess. I don't know how you explain it. <laughs> so, there's going to be a lot of support droids that look the same as Jennifer Gardner because that's how they model the support droids, I guess. Uh, the only one... The only standouts being Tay and Tessit for some reason, because they don't look the same. Oh goody, it's Capel again! <laughs> but this time we have a tank, so we could just shoot him dead. And speaking of tanks, MAO2 Andrea. How should I explain this tank? Well, it's a unique take on the Sophia series of tanks, and I like it. It's um rather jarring that most of the weapons are water-based, but as soon as you get used to it, it's really fun to drive around in it. One weapon that is actually kind of really overpowered against bosses because you can just trap them inside a bubble <laughs> is the water bind. It's very essential to beating the rest of the game with this weapon, as you can create platforms out of enemies. It's sort of like the freeze beam from the Metroid games. Or Ice Beam, I think it's called the Ice Beam anyway. The Spark Tackle makes its return from 0-1, and pretty much operates the same way, a standard ram forward that gives you iframes. And then you got the Warhead Missiles, which aren't really that great. I mean, they're spectacular if you're close up, but if you're far away, then you have to aim methodically. The missiles shoot in a triple spread shot, and again, perfect for when you're up close because all three missiles hit. But you have to aim if you're far away, because chances are, the top and bottom missiles will miss if you're not even aiming. And there's one more device under Andrea's sleeve. Granted, if Andrea has sleeves, she's a goddamn tank. It is the Splash Booster. In lieu of the hover function, the Splash Booster is a very underwhelming double jump. And underwhelming is an understatement, because this thing sucks. You can double jump, and only double jump. You can't hop into the air multiple times with Splash Booster, which may seem standard for a lot of Metroidvanias are games featuring a double jump, but compared to Blaster Master where you can straight up fly, granted if you have enough mana energy, the, the Splash Booster just straight up, it's a piece of crap. <laughs> you can't get enough airtime with that thing. Which is why you need Waterbind to make platforms for yourself. Anyway, this dungeon right here is, I think it's the only place in Area Omega where um, these dimensional distortions appear. 
Otherwise, it's not too bad. Eve can even freeze them with the Unchained DDF. AKA the Max Payne slash Fear slash Matrix slowdown move featuring Kitty Pride. Wait, isn't Kitty Pride some sort of superhero from Invincible or something? <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, speaking of Matrix, that new Matrix Resurrection. I I'm excited for that movie. Even though it's probably not going to be as good as the first Matrix because it's the first fucking Matrix movie. <laughs> But, it does have the potential to be better than 2 and 3 at least, hopefully. The Matrix to me is one of those film series where the first film is all you need. You don't need to watch Revolutions or Reloaded, just the first movie because it's excellent, one of the best movies ever made. And don't get me wrong, the second and third films are okay, but they're not as good as the first film, in my opinion. The Matrix sequels could be worse. They could be Godfather 3 levels of badness. <laughs> they could be Jurassic Park 3 levels of badness. Or Jaws 2 and 3. Or Terminator 3. Man, why is it with a lot of 3s being sucky? Is there even a third movie that I enjoy over the predecessors? Besides Indiana Jones? I literally think Last Crusade is still the best third movie of all time. I guess Friday the 13th Part 3, but that's not really saying much because <laughs> the early Friday the 13th movies were rough. They were extremely rough. You can only go uphill from Friday the 13th Part 1. That was, um, that was, um, interesting. <laughs> not in a good way. I guess Nightmare on Elm Street had a third good movie too. I like Dream Warriors, even though I still like the first movie better, but I prefer I prefer Dream Warriors over the second movie, Freddy's Nightmare or whatever it's called. <laughs> Ugh, the second movie sucked. Nightmare on Elm Street is bizarre in that regard. But getting back on subject with the other Jason and Fred, that being Frontnick and the Frog, um, you need more life ups for this tank, which I'm only going to get to three quarters of. I'm not going to fill it up all the way. The good thing is, these life ups fill up the Andrea's health bar to like two points at a time, not just one. So you only need four. And here's where Waterbind is actually crucial for you to beat the game. But as you can tell, I kind of destroyed one of the enemies I needed, so I'm just gonna have to improvise. The good thing about Andrea is, whenever you go into blue purified water, the tank will recover SP almost instantly. Here's another life up. Take note that Eve herself does not benefit from getting the life ups. Her health will stead the usual 8 hits and then you're dead. The tank is the only thing that benefits from life ups. Andrea will get the second health bar. Anyway, you have to flip the switch in order to bring the ladder to the right down. Then up next, crawling under a small space and trying to avoid these wall clanging mutants which are kinda stupid. I hate these guys. Sweet! Increases Andrea's life by 2, but to hell of Eve, she gets Jack. I don't know why Eve can't get a second health bar. Maybe it's the illness, or maybe it's the suit and eye hick she's wearing. I suppose the developers didn't think to give Eve life ups is because, well, you don't really go out on foot that much anymore after this point. Here's another essential water bind spot right here. You need to make this enemy into a platform. Good thing he constantly respawns. Last part I mentioned Eve being not a particularly fun character, at least compared to Jason, but that was on foot. Once Eve gets the tank, then shit gets real. And this is when Eve becomes the ultimate badass. The badass among badasses. Too badass even The Undertaker can't take it. Okay, maybe not that, but he's still a badass. And the final boss encounter with Eve is just flat out ridiculous. <laughs> It's too, it's too insane. I love it. It also shows how much Eve really cares for Jason and vice versa. I mean, of course, they have a thing for each other. But, the way they express it on screen is, um, kind of stupid. This game ends like the first game. <laughs> like, almost note for note, it ends kind of like the first game did. The words, there's something I want to tell you, should be the tagline of the first two games, and then for the final game is like, ah fuck it, just say what you need to say already.
Is that... Fred? Let me just run you over. He's alive. Thank goodness. Hang in there. I'll get you energy. Now I'll be able to figure out where Jason and G. Sophia are. That's one of Fred's functions as a support animal, after all. With Fred here, I should be able to pinpoint their locations. This signal. Jason is near G. Sophia. I can check their locations on the map. Hold on, just a bit longer, Jason. Ribbit, ribbit. We found Fred, but no Jason. Man, this boy meets girl story is brutal. Anyway, we got two bosses left, and one of them is just a rehash from earlier, so technically one boss left. And here, I accidentally did the stupidest thing and backtracked all the way to the first dungeon I was at when I entered Area Omega. <laughs> I thought I could have gotten a item or something in there, but no, I was mistaken. So now I have to make my way to a safe point I've been to before just so I can summon Andrea. It's a good thing that Eve can leap 40 feet into the air, but has the misfortune of dying 40 feet in the air if she drops off. You know, that makes no sense. Like, how does she die? If she's a robot, and she's apparently made out of metal or titanium or whatever, there's no calcium in those bones, how does she die from falling off an incredible height? That makes no sense. That's like Mega Man dying to spikes in one hit. He has no vital organs, or at least... Th that we know of. <laughs> Unless he's hiding something. He was a human the whole time. That bastard. It's absolutely jarring that Joel from The Last of Us can survive spikes better than Mega Man can. Anywho, let me just get my Andrea. Give me my Andrea, damn it. Say goodbye to super deformed, tiny, adorable Eve. Don't you worry, though. The next sprite of Eve is going to be way better. And sultry. Anyway, just follow the map, and that should lead you to the final boss. That's one thing I like about the Zero games as compared to the original style Blaster Master games, and almost any other Metroidvania from that era, how there's a freaking map system. The earlier Blaster Master games before the PlayStation era, oh, <laughs> where the fuck do I go? I'm on a big blue ball. But again, this was at a time when Nintendo Power was at its height. I'm trying to think, was there a issue of Blaster Master and Nintendo Power? There, there had to have been one. There's no way that this, or the original game had no Nintendo Power issue. Never mind, I actually looked it up, and Blaster Master was in the same issue as Castlevania 2. The one with the cover of Spartan Simon and a severed Dracula head. <laughs> I still don't know how they got away with that. Well, no, parents still complained and they didn't completely get away with it, but the artist wasn't going to change shit, so they just left it be. Nowadays, a person can't get a paper cut without there being some sort of content warning. Ridiculous. Video games came out of that kid stereotype, thankfully a long time ago, but now it seems like movies are being butchered and neutered as a result of the stricter politics nowadays. Name the last really violent PG movie you've seen. That's not from the 1980s or 1990s, or even early 2000s. Like, something from 2010 and beyond that's PG and is violent. For me, I'm going to have to say that Tron Legacy from 2010 <laughs> was probably the last kind of violent PG movie I've seen that was new at the time. Nowadays, uh, PG doesn't really mean a goddamn thing. Does Tron Legacy even count? It those were even real people. Those were programs. <laughs> Greetings, program. No, I'm also not advocating for a Watership Down remake to be PG, just like the original, and be extremely gory, because that wouldn't make too much sense now, would it? I just want particular ratings to actually mean something. You know, a PG rating should be a really good PG rating, and not some sort of harder-edged kids film that insults the intelligence of the audience. And I want a PG-13 rating to be a PG-13 rating and not some sort of... I don't know. <laughs> Something without blood. But anyway, with all my rambling, we're at the final boss. I can't believe it. Jason! 
He's next to a giant mutant. Has he been turned to stone? Did that mutant do this? Jason's vital signs are weak, but they're still there. He's still alive! Thank goodness! Good, because Jason's a beast. That must be what Elfie told us about, the mutant cocoon. Its energy reading is unbelievably terrifying. This thing must be collecting energy from the entirety of dimensional space. The Mutant Overlord, Plan 8G, every mutant we've fought so far, do they exist just to send energy here? Are they a part of the system? That must be why they began their invasion. The invasion that will destroy all dimensional space. Jason must have tried to fight it. He tried to protect the universe, all by himself. Jason, I'll fight too. I'll defeat that thing. I will save you. Well shit, how are you going to do that? Jason stoned out of his mind. Dro Revo, which is basically Overlord spelled backwards. Here's what you need to do for the first form of Dro Revo. You have to get out of the tank as Eve, purify the water, and then hop into this water before the lasers get you. These lasers don't blow the Andrea up in one hit, thankfully, but you'll get multi-comboed to hell. The only way to attack Dro Revo directly is to wait for these eyeballs to spawn these bubbles, Use the water bind to freeze the bubbles, and then use Spark Tackle to knock it back at Dro Evil. If you leave the bubbles be, they will explode into bullets, and those bullets will scatter across the screen. I can't do it. Andrea can weaken it, but I can't do decisive lethal damage. My only chance is the Excel Blast, but since Andrea's frame is damaged, that function is locked. Even if I could use it, I only get one shot, but... The Excel Blast plus my purification power just might be enough. I just need enough time to charge the Excel Blast to full. You just leave that to us. The Receiver. Is that Gumbe? And he's not alone, young lady. Flower! Hi, Evie! Naturally, we support droids are all present as well. Um, long time no see, Eve. We're coming to save ya! But how? Some guy named Leibniz called us up and told us everything. He told us how the markers worked, and that you were in danger. So yeah, like wormholes, right? We can totally use those and go straight there, like BAM! You just gotta hang in there until we get there, you hear? Thank you all, so much. It wasn't all for nothing after all. The people we met, the time we spent with them. This is the result of our journey. No matter what, I won't give up. Everyone is on their way. I'll do what I can to weaken the mutant cocoon until they get here. The cavalry is coming, but there's no change in strategy for this part. You just do the same thing as you did before. Wait for the bubbles to come back and then use the water bind and spark tackle. And also the music goes from diabolical to extremely peppy for some reason, I don't know why. And then the music's going to change again from peppy to really badass. The next soundtrack that I've been using for the past two end screens is really good stuff. I believe the song is called Rally Together or Work Together, some sort of team-based naming convention. <laughs> it stopped! Now's my chance. Here comes the best song in the game. Whoa! We got here just in time, didn't we? So good to see you, Evie Weevee. Now is not the time for catching up. We've got to protect the young lady. Roger. Yeah, I'm getting totally serious. I'm gonna show you what I'm made of. Thank you, everyone. We are about to see some Kingdom Hearts 2 anime bullshit right here. <laughs> Alright, everyone. I need your help. Now's our only chance to defeat it. Excel Blast! Override lock! I'm so sorry, Elfie. I might destroy Andrea. Don't worry, Eve. Andrea and I will surely live on in your heart. Thank you, Elfie. Leave this to me. I'll take this purification energy welling up inside my body. 
and pour it all into Andrea. Now here's the part where you have to button mash like a madman in order to get the Excel Blast going. Oh, and also Eve's channeling her inner anime. Oh, am I actually going to have to shout this? Say, yeah, I'm not even going to shout it. It's like 10.30 at night. <laughs> God damn it. This is awesome though. I like this scene. And this is why Eve is one of my favorite characters of all time. My helmet! You broke my helmet! You son of a bitch! Jason, is he... He's back to normal. Have I witnessed a miracle? Or is it due to the purification energy I added to the Excel Blast? Thank you, Eve. I must have put you through a lot. Jason! You sure did. Jeez, I can't believe you. Oh, come on, Eve. Stop playing coy. You have the hots from. <laughs> Sorry, Eve. I'll make it up to you another time. But for now, it seems our fight isn't over yet. Huh? You damned mutant cocoon. So this is your true form. Let's finish this. I couldn't do it before, but now I'm not alone. By my side, and in my heart, Eve is here, and my comrades. Let's go, Gaia Sophia. Here's the final boss, the Envam X, Jorevo Mastro. Oh, X for zero! The Mastro has a shit ton of attacks. This dude will test your skill to the max, and... You just gotta use all of your weapons against this guy. I'm serious. Eve, are you alright? I'm fine. Fred is safe and sound too. Ribbit? But Andre is... Ah, oh, damn. I knew it couldn't withstand the recoil from the Excel Blast. I'm sorry, Jason. Andre can't do any more than this. Don't worry, Eve. I won't let Andrea's sacrifice and your bravery go to waste. G. Sophia and I will finish this. Eve, let's do this together. H yeah! You can one-shot the Mastro with the full Excel Blast, but good luck getting a clear shot on this guy because he moves around a lot. Different colors signify different attacks. The orange is a short-range burst attack, which does a lot of damage, but it's short-ranged. Blue is bubbles. Yeah, yeah, I know. Nostalgic Critic fucking bubbles line here. And then there's a green attack, which he throws boulders at you. And I'm sure there was a red attack where he throws missiles at you too. Man, what is with these N64 GoldenEye skyboxes here? <laughs> Everything looks weird. We got the surface level, and then we got the depot level, I guess. And then everything's going fucking haywire, what's going on? Whenever you get Mastro down to quarter health, he'll mix up the attacks. He'll throw all the drills, bubbles, and boulders at your face. The burn spark will eat through that shit. After the Mastro uses every attack in the cycle, he'll pause momentarily with the sky turning pitch black and him turning gray, and that's your opportunity to lay the smack down on him. And that's also the best time where you should use your full Excel Blast and go for a big anime finish, just like the first game. Hopefully I can succeed in doing this because I really don't want to waste an SP bar. And it looks like I got the timing down. SHIT! We've successfully exited interdimensional space, and Eve is fully healed. How she was healed is ambiguous. <gasps> is, is that... Planet Sophia. We finally made it. So this is your home planet, Eve. After we thanked everybody for fighting by our side, we made our way back to regular space to see our journey through. Gumbay, Stein, Kana, 
and all the support droids. Thank you. Before we knew it, our destination was right before our eyes. <laughs> I'm feeling better already. That's right. Whether it's due to the changes Eve experienced in interdimensional space, or perhaps the powerful Excel Blast she unleashed to cure my petrification. Whatever the reason, the mutant infection in Eve's body is gone. We started this journey in order to save Eve. In the end, we achieved our goal before even reaching our destination. Our journey was one unexpected thing after another, but... The most unexpected development of all happened right at the end, huh? I'm sure it's no coincidence. We never gave up. We faced every challenge we met. I believe this is the result of everything we went through. Eve. Our battles with the mutants, and all the friends we met. If we were missing even one thing, I wouldn't be here right now. That's for damn sure. I wouldn't be here together with you, Jason. By the way, Jason, I... I... I have something I want to tell you. I'm expecting them to kiss in Zero Three. This is the second time we were left on this will they won't they cliffhanger bullshit. <laughs> that was Blaster Master Zero Two. This is a phenomenal sequel. It fixes some of the quirks from the original Zero game, like the weapons imbalance, as well as the brain dead AI. Enemies are actually smarter now, and your weapons are better. You have a dash function with Jason, and the overall difficulty curve of this game is better than the first one. My only real gripe with this game is Area Omega. Now, I like the idea of playing as Eve, but not the way they implemented it. It was more of a platforming survival horror type of uh, <laughs> gameplay, and I didn't like it. I would have just, I would have just preferred Eve to have a blaster rifle or got the tank way sooner. But that's just me. Speaking of Eve, Eve is freaking adorable in this game, just like she was in the first game. Every character is very cool, except for Kana, but even then Kana warmed up to me a little bit after a while. Definitely love Leibniz, Leibniz is an amazing character, and by the looks of Zero Three, he's going to be even better. Still don't know who this Leibniz character is, or this Lucia character. I wonder, is it a Jason from an alternate dimension? Or, better yet, could it be Alex from the Worlds of Power book? That would be amazing if Alex is Leibniz in Zero Three. That would be another curveball to throw at the audience. And based on the marketing and the actual gameplay of Zero Three, it is a curveball. Zero Three looks like a curveball. <laughs> and that's going to be the next game I do because, quite seriously, I've been waiting two years for this story to reach its peak. <laughs> So, within the next week or two, I hope you stay tuned for Blaster Master 03. It's going to be something else. Wait, what do you mean they captured Eve? Oh, those bastards are going to pay for this. Well then, this has been quite the development. Anyway, my name is Don, this was Blaster Master 02, and... This is uh, quite the reference to Metroid. Kind of, I guess. Oh, come on. I think Eve knows she's hot, so she has to show off right here. This is Earth. Jason Fretnick. Please respond. The mutants have attacked. We need your support. G Sophia, please respond. Repeat, this is Earth. Unbelievable. What a truly hilarious sight. They haven't noticed at all that his home planet is in trouble. Earth. The planet they once saved. Hmm. I wonder how he'll feel when I'm the big hero this time around. 
I hope it drives him crazy. Let's go, Lucia. Well, well, looks like Leibniz turned over a new leaf. But if he seriously comes at me with that edgelord shit again, I am going to kick his ass.